Hello and welcome to Bro Duel. This time we have our top mods of 2013. We were going to do another top 10 for the last year, but instead we decided to share a few of our personal favourites from each of the mod categories we made for our playlists. This way we get to share more than 10 mods, and you'll also get to see a wider variety of mods too. At any time while watching, you can either press the annotation on screen or link in the description to open our full spotlight of the mod in a new tab. So let's start right at the top of the list with the best animation mods of 2013. We didn't cover too many animation mods over the last year, but one that particularly caught our eye was Enhanced Animations. It's a mod that replaced several of the movement animations, from walking, running and sprinting, with all of the different weapon types, including bolts and magic. It also changed the attacking animations too, so instead of each direction attack using the same animation, now they come with different animations which helps mix things up a bit. The next category which we recently added to the playlists is for audio mods. We saw quite a few audio mods in 2013, as modders stepped away from generic armour and weapon mods and looked for other ways to improve on the vanilla game. One of our favourites for 2013 has to be the audio overhaul for Skyrim. This was a mod that added an entirely new reverb system to make noises sound different depending on the environment you're in. It also made it so you could hear things in the background more clearly, like dogs barking in the distance. And on top of all of that, it replaces hundreds of other sounds too, like footsteps to reflect the surface you're walking on. It also changes waterfalls, impact sounds, combat sounds and even the sound a dragon makes when it flaps its wings. So that has to be our top audio mod of 2013. Our favourite armour mod was tough to choose. We really liked the Bosma armour pack that added several new elven armour sets to the game. We're also quite fond of Zero Frost's incredibly detailed armour sets, like the Contractor and Mavari armours, as well as the Medusa and Drakul sets. However our top armour mod has to go to the Aesir armour. This was a mod that had an entire quest and location for us to be the most versatile armor set we've ever seen. It comes with over a hundred different pieces that you can mix and match to make it right for you, and what's great is that all of the pieces are made from materials found in the province, so it's law friendly and fits right in. City mods are some of our favorites to review, and one of our favorites of last year was Halgen Reborn, a fantastic city and quest mod that lets you rebuild the broken city of Halgen after you escape it at the start of the game. The quest involves building and training a small army to protect the destroyed city. You'll also end up fighting in an underground arena and ultimately decide the fate of the city. The voice acting is also excellent and there's a decent amount of comedic dialogue in there too. You sound like a bunch of baby mud crabs. When I ask you a question, the first and last thing to come out of your fetal sewers will be Sir! We also have to mention the Riften Thief Edition mod that overhauls the city of Riften to make it better equipped for the local thieves guild. It unlocks several new pathways around the city, allowing you to scale the rooftops. It also adds several new shady characters, as well as making the buildings more prepared for any potential thieves. Our favourite creature or monster mod has to be realistic animals and predators, a mod that added a variety of new creatures to the game, like pigs, ducks, rats and more. It also changed animal behaviour, spawns, speed and more to make animals behave like they would in real life. With that also comes baby animals for several different creatures, so overall it's a great unique mod. Last year we also saw the rebirth of the very popular monster mod, so we also recommend checking that out too. Our favourite character mod of the year was Skyrim Unbound. This was a mod that lets you start the game in a new and exciting way. You get to choose from multiple different character classes and backstories to put you in several different starting locations across the province. You can even choose whether you want to play as the Dragonborn or not, and that means you can play through the game and completely ignore the main questline. It also means you can start the Civil War right from the start of the game. Combat mods were plentiful last year, and we covered several that we used for quite a while in game. We really liked the Deadly Mutilation mod, which as you probably know adds new gory effects to combat. However our favourite of the year was probably Ultimate Combat, a mod that overhauls combat with new smarter AI. It also adds new mechanics like timed blocking, special attacks and stagger resistance. The overall effect this has is one that has to be played to fully understand, but enemies will now block, fight, dodge and cooperate with their allies as if their life was really on the line. However, if you're looking for something that mainly focuses on dragon combat, then we definitely recommend the dragon combat overhaul. This was a mod that completely changed the way dragons behaved, giving them new attacks and abilities. It also introduces locational based damage and injuries to dragons, allowing you to strike one straight out of the air. We didn't see too many follower mods in 2013, but we did get to see one of the best follower mods to date in the form of the brilliant and unusual Inigo. Inigo is a bluish Khajiit follower that you'll find in the Rift and Self. He comes with a great backstory that intertwines with your own character's past. On top of that, he comes with thousands of lines of fully voiced dialogue, and he pretty much always has something to say about a situation. 
Whether you're walking past a landmark, sneaking, or even walking backwards, Inigo always has something, usually funny, to say. Whiterun has some of the best air in Skyrim. There is a subtle dog breath aftertaste, though. Our top interface mod for 2013 is by far the race menu. This was probably one of the most useful mods released last year, and you've probably seen it in plenty of our videos. It adds a new user interface for the character creation screen. You can now easily navigate through the options, and also choose specific colours for your character's different features, like hair, eyes and skin colour. It's definitely better than the vanilla alternative, and it's a must-have for your next playthrough. For our favourite immersion mod, we couldn't pick just one, so we had to choose two. First is Hunterborn, a mod that expands on the simplistic hunting style in the vanilla game. With a style where you can dress down a kill, skin it for its pelt, take other materials for alchemy, and then finally butcher its meat. It goes more in depth too, and you'll actually receive ingredients based on the animal's weight, so you won't just receive one piece of meat from an entire elk. It also adds dozens of new alchemy ingredients and items that you can harvest from different animals. The second mod is Dynamic Things. This was a simple mod that let you interact with several of the static items in the vanilla game. Most static containers are now working, and you can also use the training dummies to actually train with. However, the most interesting feature is the ability to landscape an area by chopping down trees and bushes with an axe. Choosing our favourite magic mod was also tough, but in the end we chose Undeath. This is a mod where you need to track down an evil necromancer and his followers who are seeking the lost secrets of a lich transformation. So basically, after you complete a well-designed questline, you can unlock the magical powers of a lich, allowing you to transform once a day to make use of your new powers. The mod is extremely well made, and worth checking out if you want a new way to play with magic in Skyrim. And if you want something similar, but for druids, then we'll also include a link for the Druid Essentials mod down below. For our favourite player homes over the last year, we recommend you check out our recent Top 10 Player Homes video, which you can find a link for down below. Our favourite quest or story related mod of 2013 has to be Falscar. You all probably know about this fantastic mod by now, but for the odd one or two that don't, Falscar is a huge story and quest mod that adds an entirely new land to the game. It comes with a new questline, NPCs, side quests, and plenty more. If you're interested in finding out more, then our spotlight gives a spoiler-free view of the mod. Another story and quest mod we'd like to mention is the Civil War Overhaul. This was a mod that unlocked loads of features that were left out of the vanilla game. The original Civil War was supposed to be much bigger and designed to let the player choose what cities they wanted to attack or defend. So that's pretty much what the mod does. You get to go from commander to commander to receive orders on locations that you need to attack or defend, and what's great is that they include the major cities like Markarth, Riften, and Winterhold. So if you haven't played through the Civil War questline with this, then we definitely recommend you give it a go. Or perhaps wait until version 3 comes out, which should be very soon. One of the categories we didn't really get to cover last year were race mods. Only a few were actually released, and they weren't really the types of mods we were interested in. However, if you're looking for a racial overhaul, then you should check out the Resplendent Racial Package, which basically overhauls each of the race's stats, skills, and abilities. We haven't covered it in a video yet, but we've heard some nice things about the mod. And finally, we reach the last category, Weapon Mods. Some of our favourites include Unique Uniques, a mod by Insanity Sorrow that combined all of his unique weapon replacer mods together into one easy-to-install package. They're extremely detailed and definitely worth checking out. Then we also saw the Lore Weapon Expansion mod that, as you can probably guess, expands on the amount of weapons in the game. What's interesting is that it only uses the same weapon types that are available in the vanilla game, but makes more variants of them. So there'll be more types of iron, glass, silver and steel weapons for you to find scattered across the world. And for something a little more exotic, you should check out the Warrior Within Weapons Pack that adds a variety of interesting new weapons based on the Prince of Persia games. And that's all of our favourite mods from 2013. There's plenty more that we enjoyed, and if you're interested in checking out more from each category, then be sure to check out our categorised playlists. A lot of bigger overhauls and projects received major updates over the last year too, so if you're interested in checking out Skyrim Redone, Requiem, or updates to Luftaren, then we'll include that too, along with links to our top 10s and every other mod down below. We'll include a few honourable mentions too, and be sure to share any of your favourites from the past year in the comments below. And as always, be sure to leave endorsements on any mod you enjoy, and we hope 2014 will be just as exciting as the last year for modding Skyrim. And as always, thanks for watching.